Hello everyone, and welcome to the brand new series of training videos. This series of videos will be about the all new ProPresenter 7. The goal of these videos will be to train you on the new software and get you ready for some in-person training that we will have coming up soon. We never want to set you up to fail. We always want to set you up to succeed. And so throughout this series, we'll be teaching you all the different ins and outs, the layouts, the new looks, the new buttons, so that when we go to implement it into services, you'll feel confident and comfortable with the new software. In the future, near future, we hope to have an in-person training. Hopefully after watching all these videos, when you come to the new person training, you'll be able to run a mock service to get comfortable and feel like you know what you're doing before we go live with the new software in a service. So we're gonna start off with the first video today. This video is gonna be all about the new layout of ProPresenter. And as you can see, there's some changes to it. It's still ProPresenter, but it's just got a different feel. So the first thing I wanna notice that everybody gets excited about these days is there's dark mode. Um, so we have a darker, uh, better for your eyes looking mode um, as the number one difference with this layout. From there, I wanna take you back to ProPresenter Pro Presenter 6. And I wanna show you some of the differences between the two softwares, remind you of the things in ProPresenter 6, and show you how it's different in the layout in ProPresenter 7. So I'm gonna hop over to ProPresenter 6 really fast. And we're gonna stop start with the top bar. The top bar in ProPresenter 6 has, uh, in the top left corner, has a few buttons that were for clearing. So we have a clear all, we have a clear slides, and we have a clear backgrounds. Then we move on to what I call the custom buttons. Usually we would have a new presentation, an editor slide, a reflow editor. Um, we would have maybe planning center live, messages, clocks and timers. This is also where you'd find Bibles. And then at the end we would have templates, sometimes format, volume for, for the audio, and then a button that says whether the output is on or off. So as we hop back over to ProPresenter 7, you'll notice that the top bar looks a little bit different. So we start off with a search. This search button is allows you to search all the libraries um, in your ProPresenter. The next is what used to be format is now a text slide editor. So this would allow you to change the text of all the slides quickly. Um, that's followed by the all new theme button. This is what used to be called um, templates. It's now called themes. Then we have a series of buttons that they call the show buttons. So the first one is show. Um, this is the view of what your presentation will look like. Then you have your editor. You've got your reflow editor. You've got your Bibles. You've got stage editor, theme editor, uh, CCLI editor, props editor, mask editor. Then we have our timers, our messages, our props, and our stage display message control. Finally, on the end, we have two more buttons. The first one is the store button. This is the re renewed vision store. So it takes you to a web browser of their store. And then the final button is the on low looking media bin, which we used to call the video bin. <coughs> It's now called the media bin. Now I want to take a look at the left column. So if we jump back over to ProPresenter 6, we'll notice in the left column, the first thing that we had was the output window. This output window allowed you to see what was being output to your screens or to your stage display. Then below it was your transport control, which gave you the time in the video, the time remaining, and pause and play, and a and be able to track where it at where it is at in the video. After that, you had a search function for your library. Then you had your library with all your content. Then you had your playlists. So you would have playlists and all the items in your playlists. When we jump back over to ProPresenter 7, you'll notice that it looks a little bit different. 
So now we have multiple libraries instead of just one library. So this is a potential look for what we will have um, in the worship center. You'll notice that we now have a library that's just the songs, a library for Thursday elements, a library for each of the service types so that you can quickly find the different service types. Then below that is the playlists. So the playlists now sit in the same bin as the library. So we have a folder that has services, which would be all of our service types, and then a folder for special events. Below that is the all new items bin. Now, anytime you click on anything in the library or playlist, the items that are within those things will show up in the items bin. The items bin is what will allow you to see the flow of a playlist or any content that you might have put into ProPresenter. At the very bottom, there's a new feature in the items bin that allows you to filter. So if you start typing out a name of an item, then you'll be able to find it quickly by filtering. The last thing I want to show you is if you had the media bin open, I'll go ahead and click that. If you had that open at the very bottom, you would see the media folders, which is the backgrounds, the foregrounds, and the all new video input. Video input is not necessarily new, but the way to use it and implement it in Pro 7 is new and we may use it here at New Vision. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of the media bin now. Then I want to go over <clears throat> to the right column. So switching back over to ProPresenter 6, you're going to notice there is no right column. But if I open up the audio bin for you, you will see that the right column appears. So unless maybe you were in children's ministry, maybe a special event, um, a random thing here or there, you may have seen this audio bin. For the most part, you probably have not. So it gave you audio um, transport control, your list of uh, playlists, and then the items in that playlist. So if we go back over to ProPresenter 7, you'll notice now we have a standard right column. So at the very top, we have two buttons. These buttons are our enable, disable of our displays. So the first one's called audience. So audience displays are anything that are sent out to the main screens or maybe the hallways or anything that the audience is looking at. And if you were to click on the button or the name, it will turn it green. When it turns green, it's enabled. When it's red, it's disabled. And then the same thing for the stage displays. In Pro 7, we can now have multiple stage displays. Right below that is now our all new output window preview. There's a meter for audio to check. Then you can also see um, each of your different uh, display types. So if I were to click on the stage display, you'd see the stage display. If I go back to our audience, you'd see the audience. And I'm going to go ahead and just put up a slide for you so you can see that. So anytime you click on a slide, it appears. And then the next thing I want to show you is the clear buttons. The clear buttons are now to the right of the preview instead of up in the top corner. So the first button is the clear all button. It's a very large rectangle and you can click anywhere inside of it to clear all. Then next to it is all the different layers that you can clear and they're stacked in the layers how they would be stacked on the screen. So your top layer is your audio clear. Then you have clear messages, then you have clear props, then you have clear announcements, then you have clear slide, then you have clear media, and then finally you have clear video input, which is that all new input that I was talking about earlier. And the last thing at the very bottom is clear to logo. If you click this, it'll automatically bring up a logo and clear everything else. Then below that, we have a new transport control, which gives us three different transports. So the first one is for slides. So I'm going to show you really quick with the Romans bumper. I'm going to go ahead and play this. And as it plays, you'll notice that the transport is playing. But if I were to go over to the announcements layer transport, you see nothing. So I'm going to go ahead and clear all really fast. Just wanted you 
to be aware that there are three different ones. So if you're not seeing what's currently playing, you may have to switch back over to the correct one. Um, and then the last one is an audio transport control. So within this control, you can see the timeline. You can jump back 15 seconds. You can play pause. You can skip forward 15 seconds or you can skip to the last 30 seconds from the end. Then at the next bin is your audio bin, which always stays here now. It gives you uh, what would be like playlists or folders to collect the audio that you put into ProPresenter. And then when you were to click on one of those, items would appear in the new audio items bin. And then at the very bottom, there's also a filter for your audio items. Next, I want to show you the center section of ProPresenter. So we'll jump back to ProPresenter 6. And in ProPresenter 6, we had a center section, but normally we didn't have that audio bin, so I'm going to get rid of that. So the first thing is there were two views you could have in ProPresenter. So you could view contiguous, where you see each and every um, presentation in your playlist, or you could turn that off and you could have normal view, which allows you to just see one presentation at a time. Then on the top of each presentation, there would be an arrow that allowed you to hide the slides or show the slides. There's an information button that gave you the ability to fill in all the information. There was a slideshow button that allowed you to do a very quick slideshow that looped. There was your arrangement button that allowed you to set up the arrangements of the songs. And then the timeline button which we didn't use very often, but is another way to make a slideshow. And then finally, your transition button. So as we jump back over to ProPresenter 7, you'll notice that it's kind of the same. We don't have that down arrow. Now we just have what is the title of your item instead of presentations, they're now called items. And I'm gonna jump up to Waymaker so I can show you some of the other features. So as we jump up to Waymaker, you'll notice that it says Waymaker, and then it says what arrangement we're in. As we move across, it'll show the button for the new slideshow, which is a new icon. And as you click it, it'll give you the options for a new slideshow looping. Then it gives you uh, a brand new icon for notes, a brand new icon for arrangements, and it looks the same once you get into it. You can choose your arrangement and make all your selections like normal and then a brand new icon for timeline, then a whole new icon that's for presentation destination target. And we'll have some future videos that talk specifically about what this does. Finally, the last item button is for your default transition for this item or presentation. Then at the bottom, there's a couple things to note as well. You have orange icon here. That orange icon works with the orange icons of the library. These give you your default transitions for any of your presentations in your library and how fast that advances through that transition. The purple icon, if we were to open up the video bin, or sorry, the media bin, you'll notice that it's purple. So the purple icon drops below the media bin. This is its transitions and its timing. Finally, on the other side, there's your different views. So you have your normal slides view. You have an all new easy view. I'm just gonna click it to show you, but know that we'll give you future videos with how to use it properly. But if you notice, when I click onto it, it'll change the way you see your slides. And then there is the last view, which is a list view or table view as I call it. Um, so I'm going to go back to grid view and then like always, there's also the slider that allows you to change the size of your slides. Last thing I want to mention is just that <clears throat> pay attention to all the new icons and names of things. As, as you can see, there's a, quite a few of them. So we don't have templates anymore. We have themes. We have different icons for some of our, our um, menus and our pop-up windows and our media. Um, you now have a the new ProPresenter logo as the icon for your items. 
which are sometimes presentations. You have your new media icon for any media that you drop into a playlist. So just pay close attention to some of your new icons um, and some new things like the all new announcements layer, which will have videos coming up about that as well. And the all new video input layer. Finally, I just want to explain why they made this change to this layout and give an idea of how it works. Um, and then I'll wrap this video up. So the idea of this is to show you the flow. So we have all of our inputs. We have our library and our playlists. Then we have how those are going to look. And then we have how they're going to be outputted. So you get left to right, in, show, out. And it just is a nice flow as you work through setting up the program, as you use the program, you just have an idea of where each thing is going to be just based off of what section it is in. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you have questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and write those down, collect them throughout this whole series. And then when we do the in-person training, bring those with you. We can answer all those questions with everyone in the room and make sure that everyone hears maybe what questions, comments, and concerns you have so that we can allow everyone to hear those, everyone get the answer and work with them together. Thank you for watching this video and we look forward to continuing this training with you.